in the grafting process, they wrap that, the two together, so that the strength of the, the true vine is put into the weakling, and the root system of the strong one is going to carry the, the weakling until it produces beautiful fruit. But what I, it's wrapped in a cloth, like the Holy Spirit wraps us in to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we become one. That's, the, that's beyond our wildest imagination. But it's God's plan to bring us through the wilderness. And by that engrafting, you're righteous. You're holy. You're a saint. You ever had anybody call you something different? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the people that come in my office have never heard that. It's hard to believe when somebody's called you something else. It's hard to believe that you're blameless. It's hard to believe that you've been chosen, but you are. Will you believe that? I've had some things that have happened to me that I sure wouldn't have signed up for, talking about paying me and my friend. But I want to share with you just a couple of things because I want to tell you something. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't be standing here today. These aren't words. These aren't happy thoughts. This is actual reality, what God gives us. And I have been in events in my own personal life of deceit. We've had our very best friend take every dime we had in a financial investment that really wasn't. You think Jesus understood the betrayal when our friend kissed us, so to speak, on the cheek and then betrayed us? Jesus knew about that. I turned to him in that. You think Jesus knew what it was like to be rejected by your own family? You think Jesus knew what it was like when people call you names or say things about you that are no more true? but people won't give you a chance to explain it? Do you think Jesus understood our pain when we had our whole business ripped away by a family member through deceit? And I knew that God was going to vindicate us, and it turned out, uh, Lord, I thought you said it was going to be different. I thought you'd do all these good things to people that love you. But I'm in a fetal position on my back door and unable to walk through it because we just had every bit of our security ripped away. And then we lose all of our other investments. I mean, it's like, come on, God. This is how you treat your children? I've been there in the valley of the shadow of death crying out to God. But guess what? You picked me up in a scripture that came to my mind during this last session that I'll share with you. If you're there, and you're on your face, and you're crying out, you're going, well, God, is this how you treat your children? I'm down for the count. And the scripture that came to my mind is, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I fall, I will rise again. And I have quoted that verse, and I have quoted that verse to the enemy. Do not gloat, I will rise. And I do. And whose strength is? It's all about him. On the way to Jerusalem. He wants us to exchange all that we have that's hurt us. I've been with you. I know. I know your pain. I've been with a lot of people. I hear it every day. You've been betrayed. You've had people walk out. You've lost jobs. You've lost people to death. Your dreams have been smashed. You've been betrayed. Are you betrayed? Are you ashamed? Do you know what you've done? And God is calling you out of the shadows? Saying, you come to me and I'm going to open you a door of hope to walk through, girl. So let's choose to pitch our tent here in the valley of hope and not trouble. My daddy taught me something when he was in that terrible state. A brain damaged man in a diaper who could do nothing for himself. Couldn't understand.
saying much of his words. But I'll tell you what he could do. He could say a few words. And my mother told me about an event he had when he was declared legally dead during one of his episodes of the intensive care unit. But they resuscitated him and came back to life. You may not believe in people seeing the other side and after death experiences. Let me tell you, I believe that man because he could not speak a word that you could understand most of the time. But let me tell you what he said. I saw Jesus. My daddy couldn't say words. But he said, I saw Jesus, and he is beautiful. Daddy, why'd you come back? I said, the Lord told me I could come back if I would teach people to be appreciative and grateful. He couldn't say all these words. I'm piecing them together in sentences, but I could get word by word by word. And he had such a hard time with the word thanks. But he could say, appreciate. You know, diaper? You appreciate that? Places he had to be, he appreciated that. You know, in his wilderness, he taught us to appreciate. And that's a life principle, girls. If you will adapt and make a conscious decision in your valleys to praise Him, to thank Him, I can still see Him going, I appreciate The principle of praise and worship will carry you up higher than any law of aerodynamics straight into the throne room of God. And when you're on your faith, He'll lift you up. It's a principle of praise and thanksgiving. Not for what's happened to you. I do not thank him for the loss of all financial security. I did not thank him when my husband was told that he had cancer and had six months to live. But I thanked him that he helped the world again. And he will hold me. Praise you, God, because you're greater than this. And then I fall along will rise again. And you will too. Maybe you haven't gone there. Maybe you've never experienced anything like this. And I pray it never does. However, you know somebody that has. There's women in this room that know heartache as you can imagine. And you run into people every day. Be open to that. Take your wound and let him heal it. Because people are drawn to that. That's where this title came from. Lord, why such a title? Because he showed me his wounds were healed. And he said, as I heal yours, they're coming to you. They want your healing that I've given you. Tell them. Hope. Hope in the valley. Let him touch your wounds. What came forth from his side? Wood, water, is that all he Right. Bride came forth us. He took the sword in the wilderness so he could bring forth a bride. Us. Hallelujah. Hope himself got crucified. And he puts it in us because we've been grafted into the true vine. He is your hope and your wanderings and your despair and your joys and in all the things you experience. But he's hoping tomorrow. But he's hoping today. I was so tired this morning because I couldn't sleep last night. And I thought, boy, you better be some hope. You just better be. Because I'm hoping. I'm hoping. But it was more than a hope so. It was a hope. Certainty. Because hope means I'm bound up with you, Jesus. Hope means I'm in you, Jesus. And you're going to take me through tomorrow, whether I'm tired or not. And he does. I'm going to pitch my tent in the valley of hope. You've been grafted in, and he is healed, and so are you, as you let him touch whatever is hurting. There's a place in Hebrews that's an incredible, incredible verse. Let me see if we, if we have time to look at that. If you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews 12. Listen to 
what the writer of Hebrews is telling in his letter to the, uh, basically to the Jewish people at this time, before the destruction of their temple, but it's coming soon. Verse 18, For you have not come to a mountain that may be touched into a blazing fire, into darkness and gloom and a whirlwind, into the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words, which sound was such that even those who heard it begged, no further words should be spoken to them, for they could not bear the command. If even a beast touches the mountain, it will be stoned. So terrible was the sight that Moses himself said, I am full of fear trembling. That's the old, the tabernacle in the wilderness. <coughs> Pretty scary stuff. You think that's the God we come to? But, I love that word in scripture, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So when you're in Jericho, you're going to the heavenly Jerusalem. To the myriads of angels, the general assembly, and the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous men made perfect. I've got a lot of people there. For you, you're in a good place. And I can look unto the heavenly Jerusalem with hope. And I've come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, into the sprinkled blood which speaks better than the blood of Abel. Can we just think for a minute what this is really saying? We're here, but yet God has joined us to himself by the Holy Spirit and spiritually the scriptures say we're in heaven to Jesus. We were united to him, the perfect hope. Look at the city in a minute. Do you believe that for yourself? Is that where you can rest? Is that where you can get quiet? You know your heart's breaking? Will you let him come to you? Will you let him take off the binding or the cast and let the poisons come out? 